rock and roll capital. It's time for a show that'll open your eyes and your ears. You don't need to worry about health insurance here. Rest your lips, put down the ears. Go ahead. It's time for Band Aid. With your host, Doc Rock. <laughs> Oh, yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And a worldwide web welcome to Band Aid with Doc Rock. I am Doc Rock, your rockologist, and we are live in Living Color podcasting from the rock and roll capital of Cleveland, Ohio! <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Band Aid, if you've never seen Band Aid, first of all, where have you been? Where have you been? Band-Aid is a global and week, interactive weekly forum. It's designed to help bands get better. You know, I know it. We all know it. These are indeed tough times, so we're here to tackle your challenges in the music industry. And I'd like to say thank you, really thank you, for spreading the word and for linking us on your sites. You know, we continue to grow in viewership with every show, but it's really your show, and it's all about supporting your success. Okay. If you haven't done it, what planet are you on? You can always catch our archive shows at bandaidwithdocrock.com. You know, this website also offers a large assortment of music industry-related links that are featured on our site map as, of course, helpful resource links. That's right, very important stuff. You know, we always invite your suggestions for adding additional music industry resource links. You know, there's stuff happening every week, every day, every hour. Things are going down, new sites are up there. Wow, it is a great forum, and of course, we just need to know about it. Help me, help me, I can't do it all. I need to know about it, and I'll get them posted on my site, and there's plenty of places for you to go. And, of course, you can always join us in the chat room. And on your screen, of course, you'll see our email address, show at bandaidwithdocrock.com. You know, please use it during the show. And anytime, really, you know, email me with future show topics and suggestions. When you share your experiences, it helps all of our viewers. Always remember, always, always remember, we are in this rock together. Okay, our talent and production team is in the house tonight. You know, I couldn't do this show without all these great people around me. It's so important. The intern wizards, boop, they're flying all over the place tonight, making things happen, you know. Social rackets out here. They make like a big racket and they leave the place, okay? We're barely great people who keep up with me on Facebook and Twitter and all these great things. And, of course, my man, Jared Holly, is out there touring the country, scoping out really great talent and talking to me about it. Man, we keep the dialogue going. And, of course, the incredible Flying V, he's the guy back there. You know, he's a cardiology patient. He's the guy who really goes out there's just about sweating in this show out to make it all happen i really appreciate him appreciate morningshowcentral.com appreciate you these are all the great people that keep me soaring and going all right well doc's blood pressure yeah you know it keeps going up every single week it is elevated this week oh i know it i know it i know it well you know what here's the reason why oh, man you know, these bands get into recording and management deals by signing these documents without having them reviewed by lawyers or experts. Doesn't that sound stupid? It is stupid. But it happens. It happens out of desperation. And it went up on Doc's door saying, can you help us? Oh my gosh, what did you sign? You know, not every deal is a good deal. And it's known that most musicians know very little about legal and business practices. You're musicians, you're artists. That's understandable. You can't do it all. Nobody can do a know it all. You know, it's also known that bands get so desperate that they'll sign anything. You know, it's odd that being signed still carries such a status. You know, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like when you were a kid in grade school and you say, are you going steady? And they say, yeah, I'm going steady, okay. No, you aren't going steady. No, you haven't got a real girlfriend, but it's cool to say that, okay. Well, bands today, I've got a label deal. I'm signed. It's really cool. Ha! All right? You know, no, no, no. Um, it's, uh, bands falsely think that when they're signed, their work is over and they can just party while somebody else does all the work and accounting. I'm here to tell you there's that old, old adage. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Anything in business. There's no such thing as a free lunch. It applies everywhere. 
Everything that a label does, you know, for you especially, is usually held and deducted at cost from your eventual royalty earnings. They keep a little sheet on all that. They know it. And when you start earning, it's deducted from you. You know, getting a label deal is not the end all. It's not the end all. What do labels primarily do for you? It's distribution and it's promotion. Well, guess what? You can do that yourself. You've got the web. You've got so much at your disposal. If you are over 18, then you can sign contracts and be held liable for any agreement done without duress, of course, on being signed on your own volition. Bands get into these shady deals and then pay big bucks to get out when the sour deal is enforced. I hear it all too often. And boy, it really gets to me. Sometimes bands make deals without any form of a written contract and then all hell breaks loose, usually imploding the band. You know, there should be no misunderstandings or miscommunications. Get it up front and agreed upon in writing. It's too important. It's your career. It's your livelihood. You know, <clears throat> one thing that can happen is audio files and money can be kept away from you if these deals are not resolved. They'll withhold all this stuff. You don't have access to this. They have access to it in their deals. They own it. Future recordings can be pulled from you and your worst nightmares can come true. The steps to proper contractual relationships are, number one, take it from the doc. Check references about the other party. Just because they buy you a few beers and offer you a lunch or whatever, maybe, remember, no such thing as a free lunch. It doesn't mean that they're there in your best interest. Check references with other clients, other relationships that they have. You want to be really sure about who you're dealing uh, with. Two, determine if you trust them. That's a gut instinct. Okay? Do you trust them? Do you really feel that you can trust them with eventually your financial dealings, your growth, and a lot of aspects of your career? If you're a little bit queasy about that, then affront them about that. Ask them. Ask them. Get it straight so there's a really good trust relationship, as good as can be done. Three, let them draft the agreement, not you. You are not a lawyer. I'll say it again. It's redundant. You are not a lawyer. Do not draft agreements yourself. Do not pull stuff off the web yourself, okay? Let them fire the first shot with all of their interests in their agreement. They present it to you. It's the art of the deal. The art of the deal is that you sit quietly with your hands folded and your mouth shut. And then the next person submits to you everything that they're interested in, and then you take it from there. They fire the first shot. Four, I'd like you to take the final draft to a lawyer. Take it to a lawyer. We've got tons of uh, entertainment attorneys out there. Entertainment attorneys have been on this show. Take it to any one of them. Take it to somebody that you really trust who's a lawyer who can really give it the read through. And five, keep contracts you know, short term with the right of first refusal to renew. In other words, you could be getting into a bad deal. Keep it short term. Just so you can, you have the first right to renew maybe a year, two years. That's not a long time. But at least you can get out of that contract with your skin on, okay, and it's done on your terms. There's usually a mutual right of refusal and a right to renewal. Be sure that is in that contract. Never, never eternal. Eternal does not exist when it comes to a contract. Take your time to get it right. If the other party threatens you and then you have a bad deal being forced upon you, don't let anybody threaten you. Don't let me pressure you, okay? Because that's, not, that, again, think of the used car salesman. You know, got to buy it, got to get it off the lot right now, okay? You aren't a used car. You are a talent with real potential. They know it. Don't be rushed. Don't get into a uh, forced deal. When serious decisions loom, then surround yourself with people who are smarter and wiser and more experienced. Surround yourself with pros. Every pro knows this in the business. <sighs> Do it right. Word up from your doc. All right, now I want you to open wide and get ready for Doc's weekly prescription. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, this is a very simple one. It's a plead from me to you. Use this show's archival interviews. 
That's right. Use this show's archival interviews. For some 22 months, I have sought to get interviews on many aspects of being an entertainer, from everything topic-wise, from personal image, health, marketing, you know, legal, endless business aspects, and far beyond. MorningShowCentral.com makes every show available to you as a reference for helping your career. That's why I'm doing all this. You know what? <clears throat> there are countless and priceless information in the archives, and, and they can be found at this show's dedicated website at bandaidwithdocrock.com. Scroll through those archives, look at the show's synopses, and see you know, if it is exactly the topic that you're looking for. There's a lot, a lot of material there. The website will always remain intact, and it's always accessible to you. You know, <clears throat> I did the work to help you and pray that when in doubt, you have a source among many to educate yourself on these subjects. Of course, you know, now power isn't, or knowledge is power, you gotta be sure of that, and you knowing about these things really hedges the fact that, that you won't be taken advantage of and you know your business. You know, the web in general offers so much in addition to these topics. You know, it's wise to explore and fully research a, uh, a, a pressing subject as much as possible before you take the action or even make a commitment. You know, know what you're getting into. Do the research. Don't just jump in feet first. Jump in with your head first. You know, <clears throat> the credible information, it's all at hand and it's just a click away. So bands, I want you to follow this wise prescription and get better. All right, speaking of great efforts and great prescriptions and everything else, okay, you know, I've gotta keep talking about it every weekend long, after especially the 9-11 anniversary this past weekend, more and more our patriotism level is going up and up and up, and I just gotta salute my friend, mega guitar tech guru, Mark Rice, who was on the show. You know, he's the guitar tech of many of the greatest names in the industry. He's the man, the biggest shows around the globe. You know, he has this guitar giveaway project that I really love, it's called OurSacrifice.org. You know, it supports five grassroots veterans organizations, and these are grassroots organizations. These organizations that are out there with the people, you know, reaching the veterans that really need it and really need to be helped by every other American. So it's really important. Well, what does he do? You know, he's getting incredible donated autographed premium guitars and gear from all the top stars. That's right, top stars, premium gear, you getting it, okay? Absolutely incredible stuff. You know, you'll be blown away when you go to the site, OurSacrifice.org, and just click on Donor Artists. You're going to be amazed at what you see and what is fully available and totally free for a simple raffle ticket. It's just a raffle. Everybody's got to join me in supporting this wonderful patriotic cause. It is indeed my favorite, and now is the time to do it. So please visit OurSacrifice.org and to learn uh, more and to be amazed at what you can win for a simple raffle donation to support our deserving troops. You know, it's perpetual, by the way. If you take, if you buy a raffle ticket, you throw it in the drum, which I've done many, many times. It just stays in that drum. If you don't win, guess what? You know, it stays in there. So each month they could be pulling that and pulling your name and you could win some of the gear of your dreams from OurSacrifice.org. Mark Race, I really appreciate you. That's using your talent for something that's very, very important. Now it's time for the weekly Artist Injections! <laughs> Okay, many know that Orlando, Florida is regarded as the home of the circus. Well, that's also true for the indie folk band called Circus. That's right. Orlando Circus is a talented quintet who uses their music to make sunshine. You know, <clears throat> I could not really find any profile on Pure Volume, so I don't really know who the members are. I bumped over to Facebook and a few other places, couldn't get it together. You know, just too bad because this band is so dynamic and they have a genuine indie spark and raw passion. So <clears throat> I looked around a little bit and I said, well, Circus, got to be some great merch. Well, there's no merch to be found. You know, it's too bad when you really consider the endless potential shirt designs and things that could be done for a band called Circus. 
So <clears throat> there are three homemade performance videos posted. Well, you know, nothing really impressive about it. Um, you know, all are just of two members playing guitar with a voice and, you know, doing some random covers. But you can, you know, from these videos, at least alone, you can glean their core talent from these very simple homemade videos. You know, I'd like to see the entire band in these videos, but again, you only get a couple of members. You get a guitar and you get voice. And there's something there, though. There's something inside of this band that's very, very genuine. You know, Circus has some nice photos posted. You know, kids, you know, it's a friendly headshot of each member, which is important. Headshots are important. I give them credit for that. But there's also some really great full band shots, and they use a lot of colorful balloons, circus-like in every shot. That's smart marketing. That works, okay? I like that. Circus is a very vocal band who features unique writing and arrangements. You know, their debut album is entitled, well, Circus, and contains five diverse tracks. I like their tracks. So, let's just go ahead and enter the big top and listen to the tune Raisins by the Orlando indie folk band called Circus. Listen to this song. Gigantic tune full of friends I've scared off I truly want to be
the tune raises by the Orlando, Florida band called Circus. You know, <clears throat> wow, Circus plays blues-based tunes, you know, and pop very, very well. They kind of mix, there's a fusion that's there that's so, so natural to this band. You know, their dynamic vocal harmonies and confidence really keep you on a tightrope. You know, there are other tunes like Church, or memorable with, of course, an organ and blues-based feel to it. And the tune Preacher, you know, offers some very unique vocal phrasing and strong percussive chops. You know, the tune Black-Eyed Sun has this great bass like opener and a solid blues roots feel you know there's really just this core to this band that's uh, kind of exciting so on a scale of one to five on the band aid musical scale known as bams i will go out on that very tight rope to, to give the band circus yeah one bams for being such a genuine and defined indie band. You know, you can tell that Circus enjoys the music and pours their soul into every song. And, hmm, let's see. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. One bams for some impressive recordings with diverse material and style. You know, every recording has this, this impressive nature that's so intertwined with the musicians. You know, the musicians don't outshine each other, but they play very coherently and cohesively as a band. And it just, again, it comes so natural to this band. And of course, yeah! One bams for solid web presence and keeping updated communication with their very, very loyal fan base. So that's a total of three bams for the Orlando, Florida quintet called Circus. You know, <clears throat> Circus needs to get more into their ring. This band has cagefuls of raw talent, but they just need to get stronger images and videos. You know, they're off to a good start. Nothing wrong with it. It's solid, but they need more. You can hear their raw soul. You can feel their power when this band really decides to rock out. Circus has the talents to get considerable interest. You know, their songs do well on the indie charts, and they gig all around the Orlando area often. I think it's time they start bringing that circus all around the country. You know, with some stronger push, this band could really be shot out of the cannon. All right. Well, 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 well. Speaking of hot, from under the southern sun, Bradley Glenn Walker III was born in 1969 in Rome, Georgia. You know, some kids just know when they were born to rock out, and brother, he knew it. He felt it from day one. He now goes by the name of Butch Walker and spins his power pop web with the mighty Black Widows, and they are infectious, and they are damn dangerous. Butch Walker and the Black Widows now call Atlanta home. This infectious and powerful quartet, they just break all the rules of rock. That's what rock's about. I like it. You know, <clears throat> they disdain bios and even go so far as to post a rest in peace, you know, about uh, bios. Just claiming that, that anybody can go out there and blog anything they want to, post anything they want to, and Wikipedia is going to, you know, post it all and fool anybody. Well, he's kind of right about that, okay? I know bios and profiles are important, but they've got to be genuine. They've got to be sincere. So, Butch, i got to hand it to you about that. You know, he is uh, a very outspoken. He's also posted an interview under the link. The rest of record business is fucked. That's right, I said it, he posted it. Although, you know what, Butch Walker has been on labels and he's under talent of New York's crush management, but he still pulls no punches and tells all after his many years of, of rock knocks. So, you know, there are pics and there are photos scattered throughout his many, many websites. He's found almost anywhere on the web. You know, there's some solid promos along with lots of random pics. You know, there's a killer air band image from the smash tune, Summer of 89, of this gonzo guitar young frontman from a band called The Boys, B-O-Y-Z. Uh, Z. You know, uh, probably maybe from the Atlanta area, I don't know. But it's not really clear if it's really Butch. Not certain. You know, it would not surprise me if that were really him, because it's very dynamic, just like he is. You know, but you will never find a wider selection of killer merch than what is offered in the Butch Walker store at GoMerch.com. You know, there are countless incredible shirt designs and styles, along with albums and related packages. You know, <clears throat> how many bands would dare to offer a black promo t-shirt that only reads, Butch sucks? Hmm, got to have the confidence to do that. I like it. 
That's smart marketing. You know, there's also countless videos posted on YouTube and most anywhere you look about Butch Walker and the uh, Black Widows. You know, there are performance music vids, there's interviews, there's random fun. You know, they have it all out there. But the absolute must-watch video is the music video to their megatune, Summer of 89. You've got to see this. It was directed by Shane Valdez and has a fantastic comic intro by co-director Simo Cassell. You know, the vid shows you what awesome editing and endless effects can be done while staying on a very lone set, okay? It's really not a high-budget video, but extremely, the screenplay, the screenwriting, everything with it is extremely well done. You know, it just, uh, it is really a masterpiece. I want you to watch it twice. That's right, watch it twice, because there's something to learn from for this video. The power of the song, Ninth, uh, Summer of 89, is indeed the foundation fuel of this great music video. I am impressed. Butch Walker and the Black Widows, you know, they have the offering and the marketing down solid. That's a result of years of work and, of course, a lot of great professional direction. So, let's jump into that web and get bit by the tune, Bodegas and Blood, from the latest album by Butch Walker and the Black Widows, and the album's called Spade. Listen to this tune.
Dust and Blood by Butch Walker and the Black Widows. You know, this is only a mere sampling of the scores of tunes offered by this amazing power pop band. Their latest album is called Spade, and in 2010, they released a killer effort, and it was called I Liked It Better When You Had No Heart. And, of course, that was in follow-up to the 2008 release called Sycamore Meadows. In other words, Butch Walker is a writing and recording machine. This guy doesn't stop. Does he ever sleep? Wow. There are some 25 Four releases available on iTunes and all of his websites. You know, when he releases an album, you get the full roster of tracks. There are no shortcuts, and every tune is kicker. There's no slacker tunes allowed on Butch Walker's recordings, only the best for his many fans. You know, this band is seasoned, and you can catch those bands out there that, are, that just have that seasoning to them. They've played their dues. They've had been to the hard knocks, okay? And they've got the feel for the rock. They've got their hand on the pulse, you know? And he is relentless in delivering real rock with firecracker Georgia attitude. You know, you're also invited to join the 80s fun in support of the music video Summer of 89. You know, you can upload your 80s picks to Butch and the band, and of course, they'll troll all all through the gallery of picks and they'll select the best for some really fun prizes from the band so that's really fun stuff so check out their official dedicated website at butchwalker.com for contest details so on a scale of one to five on the band aid musical scale known as bams i point the can of raid at butch at the, the, a raid spider killer at butch walker and the black widows and give him uh, yeah one band to bring a truly cohesive and tight band with balance and reverence for delivering the best for their compositions. Their musical and vocal talents, it's all there. And of course, ha, yeah. Warm bands for some amazing writing with some really strong songwriting hooks. You know, it sounds really simplistic and straightforward, but it's guaranteed to move listeners on any level with pure, unfiltered pop and rock. And of course, yeah, let's do it. Warm bams for a library of great recordings. You know, the albums are all well themed and they're just well thought out. And the cover art is always spectacular on each. You know, it's very, very true to the music. All songs are strong, and you know, everything that he's recorded is made available to all of his fans. And of course, should we go that far? Yeah, let's do it. Ha! Wow, ah, one bams for strong branding. You know, he's a rocker. He is a pure, dyed-in-the-wool Georgia rocker. And he surrounds himself with images and statements that really strongly define him. He is not off on any artistic tangents, you know, but much like George Thurgood and Bob Seger, Butch Walker, he is consistent. You know, it works very, very well, thanks to his vision and, of course, some really competent crush management. And, gosh, do we go all the way? Should we go all the way? Should we go all the way? Yeah! Yes! One Bams for having full web presence and never forgetting his roots or fans. You know, he posts a lot of frequent pics and blogs of what he feels without any reserve or consultation. He is a free spirit rocker. You know, he is an artist beyond the incredible music that in he lives and he will eventually die for. That's a total of five Bams! Ha ha ha! That's right! It's a perfect score for Butch Walker and the Black Widows from Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Woo! Yeah! You know what? In the history of this show, I've only awarded a perfect five BAM score to one other deserving artist, and that was Frankie Ballard from Michigan. Well, mega congrats to Butch Walker and the Black Widows. The great news for you in Northeastern Ohio is that Butch Walker and the Black Widows will be creeping into Cleveland to be live in concert at Cleveland's Beachland Ballroom on Saturday, October 15th. This is a must-see. The doc's telling you it's a must-see concert for any genuine power pop fan. Gosh, I like this band. You can tell my enthusiasm, and when you check them out, you're going to share it. So, congrats to them. All right. 
You know what? That's all the artist injections that I can handle this week. Somebody know a cheap cardiologist. I'm telling you, I get excited about these beds. Yeah, I like the buzz. You know, but it's so cool to discover and inject all these creative and deserving national talents. And of course, we're looking for your opinions. I know you got one out there, okay? Just visit our dedicated show website at bandaidwithdocrock.com and click on future shows. And then click on the injection artist input link. Enter what you have to say to me about future your artists and send it. Your artist opinion matters to me. Okay. <sighs> Sex and drugs and rock and roll. Got you excited? It should. Okay, that's what it's all about. Well, two out of the three aren't too bad, all right? But which ones? Hmm. Listen as I enlighten you about interrelationships and stark realities of all three. This is not for the faint-hearted, but of course, neither is a career in music. So be prepared to get it out right here after this break. I am Doc Rock. This is Bandy with Doc Rock right here on MorningShowCentral.com. I'm damn glad you're here tonight. We're going to get into it just after this break. Thanks for hanging with me. I'll see you in a few. Shoutcast audio or video hosting. JWN Media offers complete Shoutcast hosting solutions for business or personal use. All plans come with full listener stats, custom web scripts for implementing your service into your existing website, full server control, super fast network, and huge bandwidth limits. A 99.5% uptime guarantee and friendly, knowledgeable support personnel dedicated to making your hosting experience fun and easy. With plans starting at only $3 a month, you have no excuse not to get a server of your own. Plus, with the option to add auto DJ and on-demand services, you can be confident your station will be all it can be. Custom plans are also available at their website. Simply visit jwnmedia.com and click the Shoutcast hosting link to get started right now. Cocaine Energy Supplement. Due to great consumer demand, Redux Beverages has officially announced the return of its world-famous Cocaine Energy Supplement. It's now available at retail locations across the country, as well as online at RedoxDirect.com. That's RedoxDirect.com. Don't forget to be part of the all-new Cocaine Energy Supplement social network, where you can meet other Cocaine Energy Supplement fans from around the world. Cocaine Energy Supplement. You can become a member. You can become a member by logging on to LoveCocaine. Unstoppable. Uncensored Net Noises Birthday Bash. Yeah! Get your ass to Fantasy Nightclub in Lakewood on Friday, September 23rd for live music for Morality Check, Demons Within, and The Thousand Fold. Hosted by comedian Anthony Savat. Uncensored Net Noises Birthday Bash. Sponsored by Cocaine Energy Supplement. Get more details at MorningShowCentral.com. Say that life was easy. No one. 
musical equipment, recording gear, sound reinforcement, and more. Guitar Center has you covered. Guitar Center, located at 26635 Brook Park Road in North Olmsted, has the tools of your trade. With the largest selection of music and sound gear in the area, they cater to your musical needs and have the knowledge to help you out. Guitar Center in North Olmsted. MorningShowCentral.com uses them. You should too. Need to know more? Go to GuitarCenter.com. From the Cocaine Energy Supplement Studio, you're listening. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Doc Rock. Uh, my name is Doc Rock, and of course, we're having a morning show central. Um, that's right. Well, <clears throat> we are in the VIP lab. I feel like a dad or something, you know? Wow, yeah. Sex and drugs and rock and roll. That's right. Sex and drugs and rock and roll. Wow. You know, here's the thing. First of all, you know, let's just take the time to revisit the forgotten core of rock music. That's right, you know, it's long forgotten. People don't think about these things. It's all about youth culture, okay. You know, <clears throat> there was this thing called a mobile society. That's right, when the automobile was invented. Now hang with me during this. You know, <clears throat> when uh, it meant independence. When young people could get out of the house, get in the car, get away from the house, get away from the rents and all that kind of stuff. All kinds of things could happen in a car, including a little promiscuity. Yeah, okay. It's nothing new. It's happened for generations. It's that your rents and your grandparents, well, they won't probably tell you about it. All right? But, you know, <clears throat> sex in cars in a mobile society meant independence and uh, the opportunity for promiscuity. In the 1920s, in those old Ford Model A's, Model T's, they had a rumble seat in the back, and they had this thing called ham boning. That's right. Do you know what ham boning was? Now, think back. It was riding naked in the rumble seat of those cars. That's right, there was always a bearskin blanket in the floor because the rumble seat was the back seat in cars that didn't have a back seat. So you'd lift up the rumble seat and the people driving the car didn't even have a rear view mirror so they couldn't even see what was going on. You and your sweetie could get in the back and mm -mm -mm, have a little bit of fun in those years. Okay, true stuff. It really happened. Then it moves into the 1940s, you know, during the war era and when you were going out <clears throat> with your uh, Love it in the car for a really great night? Well, it was called going to the submarine races. That's right. The submarine races in the 40s and 50s was a polite way of saying, well, you're going up to the lake to watch the submarines. I don't know about you, but I don't think there were any submarines in the regional lakes and ponds. You were doing something else. And then in the 1950s, there was this great black slang term, and it was called rock and roll. That's right, that's right. It was a black slang term. The epitome of urban. What did it mean? It meant that you were having sex in your car. Because what did your car do on its chassis and frame? It rocked and rolled, okay, according to your body gyrations. Absolutely true. If you would have been the white kid walking home to your parents in the 50s and said, me and my honey are gonna go rock and roll, you'd have been slapped naked, okay? Your parents would have slapped you in the last week. They couldn't come up with the fact that you were just going out there and doing it. Oh my gosh. But everybody did it. But few people talked about it, okay? That's the core of the term rock and roll. And all Alan Freed did was he pulled that term and applied it to the hip-shaking, gyrating music and therein was the birth of rock and roll. And it happened, ironically, right here in Cleveland. Although cars were rocking and rolling all around the country and even the globe at that time. So, you know, rock was beat music. It was beat music that moved the body. Gyrations, gyrations. It made your body move in ways that other music hadn't made it move before. Hang with me on all of this. You know, Elvis. Elvis the Pelvis, as they called him. Elvis the Pelvis, Elvis Presley, even when he was on the Ed Sullivan show, they could not show this southern 
you know, Pentecostal, Baptist, I'm not sure what he was. This is a religious guy because the music carried him like the devil's music. You can see it as you enter the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's uh, gallery. It was called The Devil's Music. What did it do? It moved Elvis Presley in ways that just seemed outside of possible for a white guy to do this. Okay? And his hips were gyrating, and on the Ed Sullivan show, they had to pull in the cameras on a tight shot on national live television because they could not show his gyrating hips to an American primetime audience on Sunday evenings in the early 60s. That was considered sinful. Rock and roll was born. Rock and roll moved on at that time because people liked it because it had that degree of sinful. And it had a lot to do with sex. That's right, sex. You know, <clears throat> it was a counterculture, new music, and it was defining a new generation. Why am I telling you all this? It's because nothing's changed. It's not changed. There are new generations being born that didn't know all this. Sure, the Rock Hall is important to see. It's important to understand this. But it's also important to understand what the music represented and what the music really does to give young people the freedom of expression and even sexual expression in modern culture. We're all caught up in genres. We're all caught up in all these little intricacies and we're missing the big picture. Billy Joel got it right when he recorded the legendary song it's still rock and roll to me. And he's so right. You know, it became corporate and popular. And all these different styles emerged in the late 60s and 70s. But there was one constant throughout all of it. Sex appeal. You know, everyone likes sex. Everyone wants to be sexy. Are you sexy? That's a real hard question to answer. That's a real hard question. Are you sexy? Okay, that's an important question. Sexy is not to be confused with blatant porn. Not at all. Being sexy is a projection, and it's not an exposition. It's a projection. You know, marketing executives, advertising executives, you know, subliminal advertising, everybody knows that sex sells. It's all around you. We're only human beings. People love to watch sexy people. They won't admit it. Oh, no, they won't admit it unless they're in the right environment with a bunch of comfortable friends. But they will not admit it. They won't admit it. So, as a performer, do you try new things? Do you try new things? Do you work on being sexy? For some of you, it's a long-term goal. You may never get there. God knows I never will. But... You know, there's places and times when you can work on it. And sexy isn't all about, you know, being the exact television persona. Remember one thing with TV, take it from the dock. It adds 10 to 12 pounds to your body weight. So it does, you know, videos and everything else. And cameras don't lie. This show is an example of that. Try new things. That is showbiz. Trying new things that can entice people in different ways. You know... Your fan base, you don't know your fan base. It can be straight, it can be gay. It's not who you imagined who would be lusting over you. You don't know, and you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So long as they're looking and buying, then they're seeing something that is appealing. And it's your job to make it appealing. You don't pick your fans. They pick you. So... You know what? You hear all this stuff all the time. And many top stars are saying, oh, they came out of the closet. They're gay. Blah, blah, blah. You know, because, you know, one thing about them is that they seek expression. The gay population seeks expression in a world of frustrations. They create style and they create images and they set trends. They build big corporations, okay, on these styles. You know, it's wonderful today. I think the greatest thing today with young people is that they believe in a one love. The entertainment, hair and fashion industry, you know, all these things at large, you know, they're trends that just gravitate toward a lot of people, a lot of gay people and otherwise, but they have very successful results from those people who are the risk takers, those who are the creators. Every band that says, I want to be just like this band or that band or that one, you're making a huge mistake because the world already has those bands. They were there ahead of you. 
They don't want more of the same. What's the future going to bring? What's tomorrow going to bring? We all find ourselves in the comfort of today, and we aren't willing to get out there and to strut our stuff to try to get people enticed about something new tomorrow. New generations come up. You know, boy bands are nothing different. You know, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, when he came out, and people say, oh, you know, he's great. What was, his, what was the slang term about Frank Sinatra? What was, his, what was his nickname? Old Blue Eyes. That's right, because his blue eyes were considered sexy in that day. And the women loved it. And it moved on to, to, to Pat Boone. It moved on to endless other people in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And then all the legendary boy bands. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going and going. So, you know, even today, all of those Bieber fans, the Bieber's going to grow up. you got to grow up. You're going to grow out of it. And if you be smart like Mark Wahlberg, you'll grow into the film industry and as an executive producer and have an ongoing, highly successful career. I will tell you that there's 99.9% .9 of you watching this show that would never do what Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch did in his day. You don't have it in you. He knew he was sexy and he played it right up to the billboards and, and Times Square, New York. So point is, is that, you know, the world is much more com comfortable now with a one love concept. You know, the U.S. is the most frigid land on the planet, and it's not exemplary of the globe's acceptance of sex. That's right. You know, here in the United States, understand something. If you haven't traveled the world, please understand that our distance, our social distance between two people speaking averages 18 inches. The rest of the world is eight inches. That's right. The rest of the world is more polite to have a face closer to you, okay, to speak. It doesn't matter male, female. It's not about making love. It's about human proximity. Eight inches for the rest of the world, and our Victorian dual standard country is 18 inches. We live distant lives. And again, we live double standards in the United States. So, I'm saying to you as bands, unless you've toured the world, realize how limited you are here, how frigid you are here, and how confined you are here, and it all is right up here in your mind. The doc is telling you, be sexy. Go out there, look at yourself, try new things, work on sex appeal, because it does work work and every star and everybody in the industry knows it but few will ever tell you about it drugs whoa drugs you know in the 60s drugs were considered a you know mind expanding and in the 60s we you know it was a mind expanding generation you know the hey ashbury grateful dead yada yada you know the hippie trip sure okay you know what it was is at that time you know, a lot of hallucinogenic drugs we're out there to be mind-expanding so you could get into the music and create the music and escape the world. It was a total escapism to just, you know, create sheer fantasy. You know, I mean, you can go into any of the iconic bands. They all did it. You know, they all did it. And I've got to admit to all of you, I've got to admit, I never did them. I never did them. And I played in some great bands back in the early 70s and stuff. I never held a joint in my hand, much less took it. You know, it was something that I didn't need. And, you know, I do not condone the use of drugs for creativity at all. You know, I think it's inherently inside of you. Um, it's a type of thing, and I can tell you for many, many of my peers, and some of them may be watching, okay, many of my bandmates, they were having a great time with all this stuff. And now today that we're older, it's like taking a, taking a perfect spoon and bending it and then trying to straighten it out later in life. There's still a kink or two in it. It never straightens out perfectly. Hmm. Think about that before you really get into that. You don't need them. You really don't need them. If the music is in you and you've got the music in you and it flows, don't need them. Okay? Um, you know, labels. Labels just love bands that are on drugs. Oh, please, sign to a major label, and they'll help you. They'll buy you the drugs as they did, okay? Because they want you to be a mindless idiot. They want you to evade the business and sales. They don't want you to know about the, the, how many uh, copies you sold. You know, they can keep their own set of books and just keep you pacified. You know, that happened to many, many, many great artists. They never even knew what they were worth. 
because they were never told properly. And again, their minds were elsewhere on self-stimulation and self-pleasure to keep them off of the business. Well, it's a different world today. It's a world of access. You know, of course, we obviously know drugs are expensive and risky and awesome, but I'm saying all the way around, avoid them, okay? You know, icons, icons really needed them to deal with pressure. The icons in those days really needed them. Look at the Michael Jackson death. Wow, what a tragedy, okay? Look at Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin, Hendrix Morrison, countless more, okay? They're all considered icons, but they all died of drug-related deaths, okay? And they all died young. They had bright futures ahead of them. You know, their music, yes, we put them on the pedestal. But sadly, you know, the, what, what drove them in, their, uh, in, the, in losing their immediate privacy and identity, they kept themselves well, uh, you know, well toked and well high and everything else. So they didn't deal with the reality and some of the pain that comes with stardom, and it has it. I'll always tell you as an artist, as your doc, be careful what you wish for. It may come true, and it can be painful. You've got to learn to deal with it. Jack Black said it best. Artist Jack Black, talented uh, Hollywood artist Jack Black said, you know, you go from a nobody to all of a sudden this celebrity, and everybody that doesn't even know you are blogging hateful things about you. And it's crazy. You've got to get hold of yourself. You have to ground yourself. You've got to keep your morals in place and you've got to know who you are and that you're not going to get rocked off that, that platform of your career and what you need to do in order to, uh, to, to grow. Very, very important. That grounding is up to you. Don't give it up to chemicals. Rock and roll, yeah, sex and drugs and rock and roll, which, by the way, was a great song by here and Jerry. If you've never heard that song, it was a one-hit wonder. I think it was an 80s uh, song, but, but a great tune. You know, rock and roll. Let me tell you about some things about our humanity, and that is well-known from a musicologist standpoint in rock and roll, but again, often not shared with you. First of all, <clears throat> drums, the floor tom. The floor tom is one of the most powerful things on that stage. People love tom-toms. There's something about the beat of a tom-tom. It's the downbeat and the bass drum and then that tom-tom. And there was a famous beat, famous beat, that was known by all black blues artists, rhythm and blues artists and all, and it was called Two Bits and a Shave. That's right, Two Bits and a Shave. That's what it was called, okay? Really fun. Then Bo Diddley actually moved it into what was called the ham bone beat. Did you ever listen to Bo Diddley? George Thorogood did a little bit of it, but you don't hear it much anymore. That simple beat played underneath any music drives people wild. Any day, any age, any race, any sex drives them wild. It is tribal. It is tribal at best, and it's called the ham bone beat. How many old bands do you, do you jump in with and you say, okay, it's a ham bone beat, let's kick it, okay? Wow, it's great. Bo Diddley made a career out of it. If you've never studied Bo Diddley, oh, he's a legend. Now is the time to do it. And understand what this man did with very few chords, but did it all with beat. Hip-hop, rap, had nothing on Bo Diddley. He was truly the founder. He had it down. You know, but drums move people. It all starts from drums. Drums are tribal, okay? And where does that beat connection come with? It comes with the heartbeat. What is our rhythm? As human beings, we have a core rhythm. Our rhythm, the first rhythm we've ever known is the human heartbeat. It's when your heart started beating and when you know you are near your mother. How do you think puppies and other animals, other little blind, you know, newborns, know that they're near mom? They can sense the heartbeat and the sense, the odor, okay? But the heartbeat is the core, core rhythm. Maintain the heartbeat. Consider that when you are a writer. Tap the heartbeat. Listen to a heartbeat. Heartbeats are subliminally put in many, many recordings. You pick it up and you gravitate toward it and you like that song more than any other for a reason. And you can't seem to find it and figure out why. It's because of the subliminal heartbeat rhythm that you align to. We're only human. When drums are moving too, you can watch the feet and watch the tapping. I often say that to bands. 
You know, if you watch the House, everybody's going, put your hands in the air. Okay, you know, fine. People will do that, you know, to be complimentary. Sometimes they don't use their rhythm. Watch their knees and their feet. The feet jump, the feet gyrate, the feet move when there's rhythm, okay? The feet are the very first thing to do it. Tapping the feet is so important. Most bands, any pro band that you watch, will always be tapping their feet when they play live. Because no matter the metronome, no matter the digital set beat, it is still the core of your rhythm, okay? That foot tap is so very, very important. Make people tap their feet. If your audience is not tapping your feet, tapping their feet, then they're missing something. You're not projecting rhythm to them. You know, one thing you have to do with it, by the way, on the topic of projecting rhythm, is learn body animation. You've heard me say this in this show countless times. Go to acting school. Learn animation. That's right. It's not about drawing animation. I'm talking about body live animation. When you are in an arena, if you're in a 1,000 seat, 5,000 seat, or 15,000 seat shed, you've got to be able to project your body rhythm when you move to project those rhythms to drive that audience, okay? That's so important to do. You don't just walk out on stage, you strut on stage and you strut in rhythm. Every pro knows this, every pro does this. The biggest names all know this. And the industry knows this and they can see that in somebody when their body projects rhythm. Nobody did it better than Michael Jackson, even Prince. But when Michael Jackson took that stage, he went into this trance, this hypnotic trance and the music moved him. And everybody in the audience wanted to be as sexy and do the movements of Michael Jackson. But very few could actually do that. That's what makes celebrities and stars. Use your hips. Dance, dance, and dance some more. A lot of bands today are too cool. We'll just bounce around, okay? Doesn't work. Use your body and learn how to be horizontal, not just vertical. Horizontal movement, you know, it's harder to do. And believe it or not, today, a lot of bands can't do it because they haven't learned how to do it. They haven't learned body rhythm projection. That's part of being sexy. That's part of the tribal part of rock and roll. It's important to learn how to bounce and to project that. Very, very important. People ask me all the time, well, Doc, rhythm is great, but what about songs and keys? Musicologists often know the best keys, most successful keys for songs are E, A, and G. That's right, E-A-N-G. For a variety of reasons with the scale and soloing and getting the tonics and the dissonance and all that right, those three keys seem to be the best keys. They seem to harmonize the most with our ears, with our throats, okay, and they are the most effective. There are, after many generations of rock, there are things that are things that you can use that will help in uh, assuring more success with your writing and your production work. I'd also like to close by saying, you know what? Note your stage wear and your body projection. Look at yourself. Take videos of your gigs and look at yourself. Do you like what you see? You know, Wearing oversized, isn't it? Okay, yeah, if you can wear skinny jeans, cool. Skinny jeans are fine. Okay, if you, if you can wear clothing that accentuates the best part of your body, then do it. Absolutely do it. Okay, they sure didn't try to cover up Dolly Parton or any other, you know, any other sex symbols before her. Not at all. They knew her best assets and they put them <clears throat> up front. So the point of it is, is that take your best, your best assets and use those things in projection with being sexy. It's fun to be sexy. It's fun to project the music. And it's fun for your crowd because your crowd lives vicariously through you. Your audience, your patrons want to watch you and to, for you to take them places that, that they are not willing to go in their confined worlds. You're out there to uplift their world, to show them new, new, new styles, to show them new trends, and to uplift them and capture your atten their attention. Okay? That's what being an entertainer is all about. That's what I preach constantly on this show. So, look good. Work that stage, work that camera. When the camera is upon you, you've got body language. Work right into that camera. Do not shy away from it because your body language rules. So absolutely, you want to be certain to do the most important thing that an entertainer can do, and that is thrill your fans. 
thrill your fans. They will do all your viral <laughs> advertising for you. They will market you. They will talk about you. And they'll bring you to places where you want to be. You just have to set that stage and give them something to talk about that's out of the ordinary of their lives. So that is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Two out of the three ain't bad. I'd like you to really take it seriously. Reevaluate yourself with these things. Go back to the basics and never forget. Rock and roll and all of its core will never die. Word up from your doc. Hey, you know, speaking of never dying, here on MorningShowCentral.com, whoa, all kinds of exciting things are happening. We have a great time here at this studio. And of course, you know, there's lots of great shows to watch. And even Band-Aid with Doc Rock. Yeah, go check it out, bandaidwithdocrock.com. Go to the archive shows. You can check those things out. You can always email me. But if you want to into other shows on this network, we offer so many great things. You know, there's a show that I like on Thursday nights, and it's, uh, it's a core video game freak show. Yeah, absolutely. All those video game freaks love their show, and it's called One Life to Play. That's right, One Life to Play. You know, it's from 7 to 8 p.m. on Thursday nights, only here on MorningShowCentral.com. It's a fast-paced show where, you're, where you will hear news, views, and reviews about gaming mixed with occasional interviews from some of the electronic industries, premier journalists, developers, and publishers. You know, you can tune in to see live demos, these tournaments, and even have the Frag of the Week. And it's all here on One Life to Play, Thursday nights at 7 p.m., right here on MorningShowCentral.com. And, of course, you know, on Friday, September 23rd, the most popular show here. It's called Uncensored Net Noise. Whoa, it's a great show. It's been on for five years. That's right. This is nothing new. We've always been here. So they've got a really great birthday party bash that's going to happen at the Fantasy Nightclub, the legendary Fantasy Nightclub, one of my favorite places to play in this city. Well, the Fantasy Nightclub, they have, they have a comedian Anthony Savat's going to be the MC that evening. The band's morality check, Demons Within and a Thousand Fold will be rocking. Rock of the House at 9 p.m. that night. Tickets are only $5 for 21 and over and $8 if you're under 21. So, again, visit MorningShowCentral.com for details. That's going to be a really great evening, a great traditional event at the Fantasy again on, uh, on Friday, September 23rd. And, of course, you know, I know you've got some shows in mind yourself. Well, if you've been thinking about a creative show or maybe even a career, why don't you call MorningShowCentral.com or what? email them. Email Chris at MorningShowCentral.com. Com. Tell them you've got a great idea. Set up an appointment to come down and tour our great studios here in downtown Cleveland. And uh, you can see what we're all about. Uh, share your ideas with them and see what kind of time slots available for you. You know what? It's all about creativity and it's all about self-expression. If you've got an idea, get it out there. We want to hear about it. And while you're down here, by the way, there's something you just have to see. If your band's been thinking about doing a music video, ho oh, ho, one of the greatest things in the country sits right here in the very same building where we are, and it's called Creative House Studios. This is a really creative building. Creative House Studios, that's right, it's the largest free market green screen production studio in the state of Ohio. You know, um, it is nothing more than three stories high, gigantic production facilities, three story high green screen, everything you could ever imagine at Rivals, any studio in this country. Bands are flocking to create Creative House Studios to uh, to use these facilities. You can bring your own video uh, videographers, your own editors. It doesn't matter, okay? Or you can use theirs. Whatever it takes for you to create a really great music video. So you can contact, you can view their website, CreativeHouseStudios.com, or call Peter at 216-225-6592. That's 216-225-6592, or email him Peter at CreativeHouseStudios.com for an appointment. And of course, he love to hear from you and uh, give you a tour. So what a great creative thing this, this is to go to MorningShowCentral.com, Creative House Studios, get out there, see these things, and uh, take advantage of some of the great assets that the rock and roll capital offers. So I want to tell you too, I've got to take a break after all this stuff. Woo, sex, drugs, and rock and roll makes me a little hot under the collar. <laughs> the interns are going, yeah, Doc, yeah, Doc, we want a break too. I hear you guys out there, my wizards are something. But I got to tell you, after this short break, you need to stay and meet one of the most successful and aspiring artists in Northeastern Ohio today. He's really a national talent, and he's a business machine, and one who generally dedicates his life and talent to important social causes and really making a difference. 
very, very special artist. Like the title of his latest smash album, Luminosity, the artist Zach is truly living luminosity and starting a revolution of a brand new consciousness. There is so much to learn about managing your career, but engaging life in addition to that from Zach. So I'm going to take a little break. We're going to come right back in the recovery room with Zach. Woo! I'm going to see you in a few. It's good to have you here on Band-Aid with Doc Rock here on MorningShowCentral.com. Hang with me. Supplement Studio. You're listening. You're listening to Morning Show Central Radio Network. Cocaine Energy Supplement. Due to great consumer demand, Redux Beverages has officially announced the return of its world famous Cocaine Energy Supplement. It's now available at retail locations across the country, as well as online at RedoxDirect.com. That's RedoxDirect.com. Don't forget to be part of the all new Cocaine Energy Supplement Social Network, where you can meet other Cocaine Energy Supplement fans from around the world. Cocaine Energy Supplement. You can become a member. You can become a member by logging on to lovecocaine.com.
unstoppable, uncensored net noises birthday bash. Yeah! Get your ass to Fantasy Nightclub in Lakewood on Friday, September 23rd for live music for Morality Check, Demons Within, and The Thousand Fold. Hosted by comedian Anthony Savat. Uncensored net noises birthday bash. Sponsored by Cocaine Energy Supplement. Get more details at MorningShowCentral.com. Welcome 
back to Man Day with Doc Rock here on MorningShowCentral.com. Yeah, we are in the recovery room. It's good to have you here with us. All right. You know, our guest in the recovery room needs no introduction. I couldn't possibly put together the paragraph after paragraph after paragraph about the success and the things this great talent has done. Uh, if you uh, don't know Zach, well, <clears throat> you're obviously not from planet Earth. That's all I've got to say. So welcome, Zach, to the recovery room. How are you tonight? I'm great. How are you? Good. Doing great. Good to have you. God, you look so relaxed. <laughs> That's not Zach relaxed. That's worth the price of admission alone because you're always on the move. My gosh, friend. <laughs> now, we just heard a couple of great Zach tunes. What two tunes did we hear? Uh, look, see, and surround me. Or the two off on your record. Look, see, and surround me. Okay, mm -hmm. and I've got, I've got to say, of course, he uh, he has this incredible new uh, new CD. Uh, I've got to hold this up. You got to get a close up of this. It's called Luminosity. Can you get this up close? Luminosity. This is good. You will not get the CD out of my hand for another six months because it is too good. I've listened to it many, many times over. I'm a huge Zach fan, <clears throat> as everybody obviously knows. What a great CD. Congratulations on this brand new release and stuff. Zach, how long now, I mean, the years of trolling on, how long have you actually been playing and writing? It's been about 12 years. 12 years now? It was about the end of high school. We, uh, last year or two of high school, I started getting into music. Really? So, yeah. Now, have you gone back to a high school reunion? No. Okay. I played my high school a few times. Okay. Did not, you? Because all your classmates are saying, uh, well, what do you do for a living now? And they're <laughs> trying to understand. You're what? You're a mega talent? You're a mega star now? Wow. Now, you know, with going back to 12 years and stuff, with all these, uh, these influences that you've had, I'm just kind of curious, how many, um, well, who would you say really are your major musical influences from prior generations? Um, sure. Well, I listen to a lot of music, and uh, I love all, all different kinds. Um, John Lennon and the Beatles were a huge influence yeah, when I started, yeah. um, and Neil Young and Tom Petty were always being played in the house, so I mm -hmm. really grew to love them as I was getting started, and, and um, Prince and U2 are also huge influences on a lot of different things that I uh -huh. do. And, Michael yeah. Jackson, obviously. Sure, oh sure. <laughs> I, I don't think you could be born in the 80s and not have Michael Jackson as an influence <laughs> somewhere in your life. <laughs> and you, know, you know what's amazing about it? If, if you've seen Zach tear it up in concert, and believe me, he can tear it up, you can do the moves! This guy can do the moves like MJ and Prince, you know? So I think that, I mean, I really got to compliment you about that. And, you know, you had to work at that a little bit too, right? I mean, it doesn't, it, you had the feel and, you know, and it comes natural. But like I talked about earlier, you've got to really put some, some work into that stage animation. Mm -hmm. Because when you turn on live, I mean, it's, uh, there's that moment at a Zach live show, you know, that all of a sudden the rhythm just electrifies him. And he just, he loses it. He loses it. Crowd, just like the parting of the waves, the crowd's out there, the crowd gets so into it because of the animation, the body language, and you are really, really good at it. So it doesn't surprise me about the MJ and, and, and Prince <laughs> influences. I think that's great. The, um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, you're one of the few musicians in, in really in Northern Ohio that has a really successful record label. You still have, is it Buffalo Zeph Records? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Buffalo Zeph Records, okay, still, still moving with that. How, you know, how is it managing your own label? I mean, everybody wants to get signed. And, but you've got your own label, and you're mm -hmm. out there doing your thing. Is it, uh, you know, is it a lot of work for you, or is it... Uh... Well, I mean, it's a lot of work, but, um, you know, I'd rather... The, the worst day that I could ever possibly have doing this is better than the best day in an office. Okay. <laughs> right there. You're the key to it. Yeah. No, no, I understand, and I agree with it. Well, but it, 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 It's a lot of work, but, I mean, it, I absolutely love what I do, and I love music, and I love being able to reach people and hopefully inspire people and, mm -hmm. and to see somebody in the audience connect and to see somebody get it um, is worth all of the you know sleepless nights and long hours and driving sure. and whatever else I'm doing. Well, know? and the, the neat thing about it, like, it's like any entrepreneurial position, is that you're doing it all for your own your career. You're building it yourself mm -hmm. on your own terms with mm -hmm. your own destiny. That's why I respect you so much as an artist because you know when people say you're on your game, you are on your game, you know, and it's, uh, it's so neat. <clears throat> Zach, you know, <clears throat> over these 12 years and, and some of these fantastic releases that you've done, 
How have you felt? How has your career kind of morphed through all that? Do you look back at like eight years ago and go, "What was I thinking?" You know? <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to play this song or that song, but you know, is it? Is it how have you felt yourself morphing? Uh, there's definitely been a lot of morphing. Um, the first several years was just sort of about finding out who I was as an artist and a songwriter and where my voice was mm -hmm. um, and what I was trying to say, I guess, through my art. Um, so it took several years to kind of get there and a lot of trying this, trying that, <laughs> um, failing miserably and trying something else and, you know, keep going. But it's, uh, you know, it's been a fast process. The morphing was always really, really quick. Like every three months would be something completely different for me. <laughs> you know? okay. so, um, but it's morphed into some uh, a place that I, I'm really excited about right now. So. Well, that's the thing. You know, we've always got to stay with change. You know, change is mm. everything, and mm. so and be responsive to our world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about it's not again. It's not about just you, as it is you in the world and mm -hmm. how the world re you know reflects your artistry and your music. So um, it's it you know I can I can understand that. You know, is it? <clears throat> would you always say that your your music has been somewhat reflective of your of your life creed? Because you're such a genuine person. For those for those who have not spent time with Zach or know Zach, you're one of the most genuine people out there. I mean, really, it's just, and your artistry just flows out of you so naturally, and it comes from within. But but is it you know part of that is because of your because of these changes and these these new life focuses, these new creeds that you found that really inspire who you are as an artist. Yeah, I would say so. I, I've always been a pretty happy, upbeat kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So whenever I started doing music, I, I really wanted, I mean, that was kind of the natural flow for me was mm -hmm. to, to be very um, optimistic and upbeat and uh, positive. Mm -hmm. So I always felt that, that was kind of what I was called to say and that's what my art mm -hmm. is supposed to be about. Sure, and your art's all about giving back. And you know, like, I think about the great things like, Again, with what you're doing with Pan Can, obviously in honoring your father, mm -hmm. is your late father is just uh, it's monumental, and that is that is such a great event that, that you've done over all the years at uh, Musica. I think it's still mm -hmm. Musica, mm -hmm. and you know, and even now, what was I reading about you? You, uh, from a dietary standpoint, you've you know you've you've, you've changed your whole diet, and you are uh, you're vegan. Mm -hmm. Is it vegan or vegetarian? Vegan. Vegan. Mm -hmm. and so vegan means you cannot eat what? Um, Anything with eyes. I can have potatoes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but All right. No, no meat, no fish, no chicken, no dairy. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically no animal products. Okay. Um, no honey, and you know, mm -hmm. just vegetables and fruit and grains. Uh huh. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Uh, I won't tell anybody. Do you do you miss a good steak? Not at all. <laughs> okay. Darn, I was hoping to catch up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, my great palate food. has expanded so much since I gave all that up that uh -huh. the. Tastes are just incredible. I, I'm always happy. But isn't it, you know, it's kind of neat. It's in a part of the morphing process. How we as a human species mm. adapt. Mm -hmm. You know how we adapt, because the, the vegan way was the right way and the original way to eat, and we adapted the wrong eating habits. Mm -hmm. You know, which became you know became marketing targets and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now we're going back to our roots, if you will, you know, and uh, sure. that's really great to have the self-discipline to, uh, to do that. And then you've taken that now a step further. You're so involved in a lot of social um, sure. activism. Uh, what types of things um, are you doing? I do a lot of social stuff. Um, I'm a firm, I guess, practitioner as much as I can be of nonviolence. And mm -hmm. so everything that I do stems from that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I've created uh, an organization called Akron Peace Project where we work to cultivate nonviolence in the self, the home, and the community. And uh, we do a lot of programs, a lot of events, speakers, discussions. We have Akron Peace Week is our big event that we do um, yearly, and the city's behind us and the county now is behind us. So cool. Is there a website a or something? Uh, AkronPeaceProject.org. Dot org, of course. Is our mm -hmm. website. And we're on Facebook. You can join mm -hmm. the group. Okay, great. So, so it's really, you know, I mean, it's, it, it couldn't happen at a better time, Zach. I mean, obviously, you know, and not and not just a matter of just being Akron, but you know, it's occurring in Akron. Sure. But everybody needs to be involved in peace initiatives. Sure. You know, have just got to be. So, what? Uh, so important. Have you, you know, um, in your in your thoughts? Because you've traveled around, you've toured around a lot, you've seen a lot. Zach, uh, is the world hopeless? Never. <laughs> 
Never. No, there's always hope. Oh, I'm so glad to hear All that. sorts of hope. Okay. You know, it's interesting. I actually had a, someone was telling me a very inspirational thing that, you know, we see on the news and there's always all sorts of just horrible, depressing things. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about it is um, it's on the news because it's newsworthy because it is not the normal. Mm -hmm. And right. so it's actually kind of inspiring when you see that and you think, you know, you could get sucked into it and say, oh, there's war and there's hatred, and there's, you know, murder and all this terrible things and all the politicians lying and everything's bad. Mm -hmm. But when you keep hearing it, you realize that it's being reported because it is the aberration. It's not That's the normal. Right. The normal dealings that everybody has is peaceful and happy. And the number one fear across all of humanity is the fear of human aggression. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I mean, that just tells you right there that there's hope. <laughs> and, you know, as one great, one great, uh, I think it was uh, Hank LaConte Sr. of the Agora had a legendary sign. I don't know where it is today, but it should be in the Rock Hall. And it hung for years on the original Agora. And I believe it was something like, uh, there's nothing more frightful than ignorance in action, you know, and it was just a cool, you know, in a rock club, it's a great thing, okay, <laughs> great thing, you know, yeah. you made a great commitment with that, but yeah. you're absolutely right, you know, because we, you know, I mean, um, we look at uh, the news today, and people look at it consistently, and read it consistently, it's on the doorstep, and they say, this is my world, oh, no, it's not, no. It's not your world, you know. There's no, we create our own world. Right, we create our own <laughs> worlds, absolutely. And so you're so reflective about this. And this is, you know, is, is this part of the spirit of all these good things that you're doing now, Zach? And you're really making a difference, and I really praise you with this. But is this part of what, you know, went into the luminosity concept? Yeah, I've definitely, over the last several years, have been working really hard to... Um, align what I believe in with, uh, you know, the music and making my mm -hmm. music stand for something and be a part of something mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to just doing music. Um, so I've been, the two have been coming together quite a lot and so I'd say that this project definitely uh, reflects um, all those ideas coming together. And sure, but you know, the cover concept is so, is so cool. I mean, done with the, you know, done again with the, the skyline, the city skyline. Mm -hmm and the one skylight that is centered. There's a rooftop skylight in the center of this that, that is focusing directly up, and there is a bird in flight. What type of bird is that? I was trying to figure that out. I, I'm not sure. Is I that, think it's just the... Is it, is it, you know, well, it doesn't look like your sparrow. It's a bigger bird, <laughs> and it doesn't look like the American eagle. It's not, you know, but it, it's not a vulture, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, something, but it, it's a wonderful bird, a peace dove. I was going to say, I think okay, it's a dove. It's a peace dove in yeah. flight, oh, you know, over the top of this, this, uh, this soul skylight with a cityscape and the golden light coming up. It is really a neat, you know, luminescent mm -hmm. concept. And, right, you know, I've got, a, I, you know, who did the cover art? Was that, was that uh, did you come up with the concept or, you know, did your creative staff at Buffalo Zeph Records um, we had, we had a, the we had art num department there. We had a number of ideas, and we uh -huh. ended up uh, going with that uh, photograph, actually. Okay. So. Yeah. No, it's a great, great photograph. The, uh, but you know, in 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 being luminescent, I think it's uh, it's it's very attractive. Um, and this was recorded at uh, was it UHF Studio mm -hmm. in Cleveland? I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with it. It's uh, tell us about it. it's because the recording quality is outstanding. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a warehouse studio in. Um, it's actually kind of up the road from here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, really? Yeah, it's not too far. Um, but my, my drummer sort of runs it. Okay. And, um, so he is uh, a love for all things sort of vintage and interesting and old. And uh -huh. so there's quite a lot of fun toys. I too. know people like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. Uh -huh. That's neat. Did you find with the recording process, because of the, I won't say the emotional sensitivity, but let's say the content sensitivity and what you were getting to this. Did you, sur you know, surround yourself with a band and, you know, and studio folk that were sort of aligned in your vision? Um, sort of. We've been, uh, the band that's on this has been playing with me now for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, some members for a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Trent is still with you? He is, yeah. The legendary Charlie Trent. Wow. Sure. It's been a long time. He's Six great. Years, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we did a, a little bit of that and, and there was some thought process going into the songs and what we wanted to accomplish okay. kind of from the beginning and we recorded the record um, very differently than the last few that I've made and it was all done, everybody played together in a room and it was all kind of basically live with some overdub kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, so we were able to get the energy that we wanted from each song. Yeah. 
that way as opposed to doing them piece this, by piece. This CD Luminosity, and I was telling Zach before he came on the set off camera, and I've got to share this with you. As I've listened to this so many times, you know, these, these tracks all flow together as nine tracks, and they flow together beautifully. I mean, it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's not like nine separate tracks, mm -hmm. but it reminds me of many of the Beatles albums, you know, where there was just such a great con you know, content flow mm -hmm. that worked well under the concept. And this is the same way. It's not like this tune's better than that tune, or this tune's a single or whatever. No, you know, it's it, all nine tunes have just this, this wonderful metabolism about, about them. No tune is, is understated nor overstated. You know, and I think that, that getting that consistency <clears throat> in the studio is very, very difficult to do, you know, for a continuous period of time. How, how many hours did it take to record this CD? I'm curious. Um, it really wasn't too bad. We, let's see, we started in January, and I think we were done recording um, by February, and we, we had maybe three sessions. Really? Okay. So there really was a fairly mm, that's quick reasonable. process, and we, we did do a, a, a handful of overdubs and vocals and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and then we spent some time mixing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. But, um, it wasn't a huge, you know, it wasn't... Well, you've recorded so many in the past, obviously, do you? It's not, yeah. you know, it's, it's nothing new, but you, your focus on every recording project is obvious, you know, mm -hmm. and every one of your, you know, every one of your releases sure. are really quite good, so Thanks. it's great. The, um, uh, do you have any feelings about analog over digital? Are you one of the guys kind of being a retro back trying to go analog over digital and do vinyl and, you know, any feelings about that, Zach? With the warmth of your music? I mean, I, I certainly love analog. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gets diff cost prohibitive mm -hmm. a lot for the, the stuff that I do. Um, and I, I would love to press something on vinyl. I don't know that necessarily yeah. my audience is quite the vinyl audience yet. Right. But, um, yeah, there's timing for that. There is, yeah. You're very wise. <laughs> my, my compliments to the executive staff at Buffalo Zeph Records for making <laughs> that judgment call. Good, it's right, you know. But it, uh, it's it's cool when you get it done. Well, it's just you know it's just again it's another another opportunity that yeah. that's out there. So, sure, sure. you know the um, you know let's talk about live shows because you know you're just so explosive live. I mean you you know, you come out and you you project good energy in the first song, and then the second song you know is a bit reflective, and the third song you better put your seatbelts on because Zach starts <laughs> really getting into it and really you know trumping up, and then you just lose it. I mean, you just lose it. And you really, you know, if there ever was an artist who worked the house, there's the guy who does it. You know, it's just a, uh, somebody's got to keep you on a leash and pull you back on that stage because wireless <laughs> was invented for you. Man, I think it was, you yeah. take full advantage of all that stuff. <laughs> and the audience <laughs> really gets into it. I mean, the fans really get into it because, you you know, it's not just you projecting off a stage, yeah. but the whole venue becomes sort of, you know, almost interactive, sure. you know, with a Zach show. If you haven't experienced Zach live, you're missing something. So it's, <laughs> you know, you are truly one of the most dynamic performers uh, out of this, out of this re ever to come out of this region. Um, um, the, uh, do you consider yourself, you know, more of an artist or a songwriter? Mm, that's a good one. I'd probably say I'm a songwriter first and mm. an artist second. But, okay. Um, I perform a lot, so <laughs> yes, I, I guess that the the artist side of it, um, you know, is definitely very, you know, uh, there a lot. It's it's very um, forward, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Well, the uh, you know the. With writing, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you write, and you go, eh, there's not the time for it. You know, you just, you, you, I, I, somebody should just look underneath your guitar cases or underneath your bed or, <laughs> or in the linen closet. There's probably stacks of Zach manuscripts there. There's, there's, there's hundreds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And you pull them when you need to. It's sort of a sure. lie. But, that's, but those are the hallmarks of great songwriters because you just don't stop. No, yeah. I mean, the, songwriting is like any other um, writing or any other craft is the more you mm. do it. The hopefully the better that you get at it. Sure. You learn things about it the more that you do it. So. Have you ever had to take your tour bus and go, driver, pull over, I want to write this down, I want to get this recorded, you know? I, I've had to do that a couple of times. <laughs> I, I had a, a really, one of my best friends from high school um, was had a daughter and it was sort of the first friend to have like a major life change. Mm -hmm. from, sure. And um, so I had wanted to write something for her and her daughter, and it's like one of the hardest tasks that you can ever do because every line you come up with is like worse than Hallmark cheese. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so finally, stuff started coming to me as I was driving to the desert in Nevada over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm doing the best that I can. I have a little handheld, and I was yeah. 
coming up with lines and melodies and everything was great, but I needed to pull over to get the guitar out and finish it. And uh, it was 108 or 9 degrees and there was no rest stops. So I was just <laughs> oh going and going, gosh. trying not to forget stuff. And finally, I found a place that I could pull over. There was no shade. And so I was like, I have 10 minutes or I will die. And so <laughs> luckily, I pu pushed the song out. That's that, that, that's the theater. Yeah, really, my gosh. You know, <laughs> next time in Nevada next year, you know, the Burning Man Festival. <laughs> I mean, you really got to do the Burning Man Festival as an artist. That's really, that would really be amazing. You know, with live shows, do you have a preference over, over you know, small sort of intimate venues, you know, solo venues, or do you really, you know, do you really like to, to, you know, to ramp up to the large stage with a full band? Is there kind of a preference as an artist? Do you feel you more um, genuine one way or the other? No, I love them both. They both are, uh, I guess, aspects of my personality or aspects of my, my artistry. Um, mm. I don't think I'd be able to do just one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I really like the intimacy of the, the small shows and being able to play solo and, and interact with people one-on-one, -on -one. I really love that, but I also love the energy and, and the emotion that can be created with a full thing and a lot of people. And, you know. Sure, sure. So. Is there, you know, because you've done some, some incredible shows, do you find with all your recordings and all, is there a Zach classic, you know, one particular tune that sort of defines you, that you play in every show, that the audience is just always into? Uh, yeah, I have a couple. A yeah. couple that's like the oh, song called Manifest. And, uh, um, yes, of course. It's one of my personal favorites because the chorus is we should manifest ourselves in exquisiteness every chance we get. Mm -hmm. And I feel it sort of sums up everything I'm all about. Yep. So I do play that one a lot. I get a lot of... Uh, it seems to mean a lot to a lot of people. I can see. Yeah, Manifest is always, you know, always an audience group. But, you know, i got to tell you, too. Distracted. That is Still, good, I was going to mention yeah. everybody. You know, you're never going to outgrow that. So you're never going to shed it. Yeah. Okay. It's like the Stones when you go up on stage 60 years later, they still have to play Jump and Jack Flash while you'll be playing Distracted. Yeah. You know, because everybody loves that tune. That is a great tune. So it's fun. fun to play. No, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> well, you did some. I mean, obviously, nobody does uh, John Lennon's Imagine like you. I mean, that is just a wonderful. I, I can't think of an artist that does a more a better tribute of that song to that man with sincerity. You know, than you, mm -hmm. you know, and that's 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 so important. And even Purple Rain, because when you play Purple Rain, now I know you're all rolling your eyes out there. Now wait a second, wait a second. This man does a version of Purple Rain with soul, okay, I and mean, real soul, and crowds just love it. So you don't get Zach doing a cover that often, but when he does them, man, you do them well. You know, you really do them well, so uh, compliments to you on that. Thanks. And then those diverse types of, of tunes, you know. Um, I've got to ask you this one because of all the fun we've had here on the show tonight, but uh, do fans say you're sexy? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you turn the red light up so you can't see him blush? No. <laughs> it's always tough when you ask that to somebody. Well, you know, you know, whatever, but because uh, you're so stylish and you have, you, have, you have this incredible presence. And I've seen people literally in the audience taking notes, you know, about, <laughs> wow, where does he shop? You know, when he finds the coolest things, you know, and you strut and you move. But, but it's always funny when you ask an artist that, hey, are you sexy? They, uh, you know, it's a, di it's a difficult thing for any person to identify with, you sure. know, because so it's, uh, I just had to have fun with, you, with that. So <laughs> just always good, you know, just, just good feel. You know, do, you know, would you would you say with all the touring and everything that you're doing? Because I think I think honestly, honestly, you play more live gigs when you take a year. You play more live shows combined than any artist in, in Northeast Ohio. There's undeniably, I mean undeniably. I wish you were paid by the mile, <laughs> so it would be great. But you know, with with all the the stress and everything going back with you know back and forth that and all the current events that are going on in the world, you know, how do you balance all of that? with keeping your glowing optimistic nature to create great CDs like Luminosity. I mean, we're in a world of negativity. You know, we talked about the media, sure, absolutely right. And we're finding, you know, a lack of civility with people and a lack of kindnesses and graces and things are kind of breaking down a little bit and everybody's got an excuse, well, why they don't step up to the plate responsibly. And you do all that. You step right up and you do great things. Um, do you, uh, you know, do you find that there's a, uh, with this negativity, do you find that being positive and positive attitudes project further than negative attitudes? 
I think so. I mean, they do for me. Okay. Um, I, I just, um, I believe in, in the goodness of, of folks and that, you know, I really firmly believe that we need to be the change that we want to see. And mm -hmm. so to, to hope for some sort of better place or more civil place or, you know, better mm -hmm. interactions with people, um, it's not going to happen from other people doing it. It happens because you do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is more influential than, you know, other people. Um. But you, you see this, this is not a new philosophy. No. This is a core human thing that's always been there yeah. that we've somehow lost in all of our quest for materialism and McMansions and all these things mm -hmm. that we do and, and, and what the web has not done in a positive way for us has disenfranchised us. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a, 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 you know, this is something that's been there that's been so washed over. Do you see it coming back as kind of a, as a neat new trend? I mean, because you're out there as an activist. Are you seeing people saying, I've had enough? I've had enough and I really now, I want to change my world? I, I really do. I, it's starting. I, I can't say that there's, you know, necessarily the trend is not there that people are going to be taken to the streets yet. But mm -hmm. it's... Uh, sure. It's starting, and I'm, no, I'm seeing that people are more uh, willing to do something to change the world, even if it's, you know, being more responsible, um, uh, you know, uh, as consumers or environmentally. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, people are starting to, to think about things in a different way, and it's not thinking about things as our parents thought about things. Sure, you know, it's sure. Taking responsibility for our actions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when you consume a beverage, you've got what's left over is a bottle, mm -hmm. okay, or a can, or whatever, maybe doing the right thing with that. Mm -hmm. You know, th like you said, purchasing things, supporting the right restaurants, you know, all these types mm -hmm. of things. You know, it's just, access is amazing. I, I was talking to somebody the other day about the Middle East. All the dictatorships, those rotten dictators that are being ousted, it's happened because of technology. Because of the cell phone and tweeting, finally the rebels are going, hey, we can communicate and talk, and we're not going to get shut down. And it's going to change the Middle East, mm -hmm. you know, it, which is uh, unheard of 10 years ago. Never would have thought it possible. But change can occur when people get together and really do something about it. And, and you do, you know, you do is, do you ever feel like, you know, do you ever get frustrated going, you know, gosh, I could do more? You know, do you just keep... Yeah, I mean, you're always, I think anybody that's trying to do anything uh, decent kind of runs into those feelings now and again, but you just have to keep doing it and realize mm -hmm. that nothing that you do is useless. It's all for a purpose and it's all playing out for a better end. It's positive energy. Uh, yeah, it's positive energy. We can know. always use more positive energy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. And by the way, on this, I read, what did I see on here that I've got to ask you about? The uh, Be the Change, it says in the back of the album, live consciously and compassionately, be ahimsa. Mm -hmm. Help us, what is ahimsa? Ahimsa is nonviolence. It's the concept of complete nonviolence to everything, to the, each other, to ourselves, to the world, to all the creatures we share this What's the etymology of the word? Is it, is it Hindu, Indian, or is it, okay, is it really, okay. Because you're obviously in the mass day, but, but uh, that's, that's wonderful. You don't see this very often on CDs. You see it from men of conviction who, who really, the great thing about with a CD is it's not self-gratifying. There's so many thank yous, so many, you know, uh, production credits and everything else. And the last thing you see on any of this is Zach. Because, you know, and it really comes out about this. You've done, and, and, and so much of it is in gold type, you know. You, you've really, you know, again, living your words in luminosity, illuminated the great aspects and people and everything that made this thing possible. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much all about you. And I think that's so, you know, so incredible and so inspirational, Zach. So it's, uh, I just, just love that, uh, that piece. What's the biggest challenge right now that's facing your career? What's the next step? <laughs> you just keep, you know, you're very methodical and you yeah. keep growing and growing. Well, what's the next big thing? Um, yeah, I think it's just always, uh, for me, getting into different markets um, mm -hmm. and, and expanding and growing that way. Uh, that's sort of my next big step. And uh, I've really been working on, on sort of putting shows together that are, are more thematical based, I guess. Sure. Um, and more than just a, a music uh, concert. So there's... 
different multimedia things involved, and I think I'd like oh, to get good. more of that happening more often. Okay. Okay, neat stuff, too. Europe's waiting for you, by the way. Would you hurry up and get I there? I would love to go to Europe. <laughs> you are so ready. So it's called Europe, look out, he's coming. <laughs> it's great. Well, you know, and you've got all, because, you know, traveling and touring is going to be difficult because all these things you're so active with. And I noticed some postcards when you came in tonight. The, uh, gosh, at the Akron Civic Theater on October 5th, okay, at 7 p.m., the Love Initiative, mm -hmm. Love in Action. Wow, tell us about this. Is it a concert? It is. It's, it's, uh, the Love Initiative Great. is sort of a random acts of kindness sort of mm -hmm. loose organization that I put together. And uh, my concept with those shows that are Love Initiative shows are, are they are much more multimedia. They include, um, you know, visuals. They include some theatrical moments. It's still very musical based and, you know, concerty, I guess. But um, there is certainly no uh, distinction between the uh, performers and the audience. It's... As one. It's, it's pretty much as one. Yeah, yeah. as love should be. And uh, mm -hmm. that show in particular is called Love in Action. Um, I want folks to walk out with a feeling of mm -hmm. what they can do to help in their own communities, in their own lives. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important. Very inspirational. And this one, I saw the uh, Akron Peace Week. The first week of October. Mm -hmm. Really? It's an entire week. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've got, there's all kinds of things going down. There's some yoga, dance, speakers, activities, films, demonstrations, community volunteering, recognition, ceremonies, social awareness, education, and much more. It, it's going to take a week to get all that done. <laughs> it does. This is cool. <laughs> so AkronPeaceProject.org. So what great things that, 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 that you're doing. I think it's, I think it's just incredible. And uh, you know, attitudes are contagious, and actions inspire other people. And certainly, by doing this, you've got to feel it's somewhat cyclical because you're, you know, you're doing these good things. You're feeling, you know, the the impact and the humanity from all this, which as an artist is making you create more. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, again, it's cyclical. Sure. So sure. that's such a cool thing. That's all about luminosity. So you know, congratulations to you. You are a great man. And uh, is there, uh, uh, on top of these things, any uh, any short-term gigs we've got to you know uh, try to find, or we can go to your website, which is zachmusic.net. Zachmusic.net, and it is a great website. I've talked about you a few weeks ago on this show. I talked about your newsletter. Man, that's the greatest newsletter. Few bands put out a newsletter as good as Buffalo Zeph Records about you, you know. And I talked about the importance of newsletters and all. And man, you get it right, you know. So it's uh, so it's so important. If you know, if any artist, you certainly deserve the success because you've worked hard getting the details down, and you give back beyond measure. So. Uh, I really have to congratulate you. It's fantastic. So it is, uh, I wish you a lot of luck. I wish you, uh, I wish you a great time on your European tour. That will be coming up. Okay. <laughs> I, do, I do do house concerts. Oh, you Lots does? of house concerts. Really? So. Okay. And if there's anyone in Europe is, is watching or elsewhere. Yeah. I could say a good German, a ger good German Rhine Castle, I think, would be just That'd the right, be awesome. just the right venue for you. you know? And, and uh, it would be, it would be great. Nobody would be distracted, you know. But uh, fun stuff. So I wish you a lot of luck. You are. A great artist, a wonderful friend, and uh, and a real inspiration to humanity. Thank you for all the good things you do. It's my pleasure. Thank you for all the good things you do. Yeah, uh, well, it's all it's all mutual. You inspire me. It's all cyclical, and of course, it's fun here on Band Aid with Doc Rock and having Zach here in the recovery room. But I'd also like to say some other thanks. Thanks to the Band Aid production team, the intern wizards. Well, yeah, they're a great crew out there. Social racket out there. He's always making a big noise. All those guys. My buddy Jared Holly out there on tour around this country, and he's telling me what's going on with the beat out there. It is important. Cool dude. But you know what? The big guy, the Flying V. He's the guy back there behind the board who's always in panic making sure this show happens. I couldn't do it without him. But the most important person is you. I thank you for logging on to this podcast because you really are a part of this team. You know, September 20th, next week, well, I'm going to be on the West Coast, so I've got to regret that I cannot be live next week. Yeah, I'm sorry, because I always miss you. But you know what? They're going to have a great archive show so from many of our great archives. I've selected one that I want you to see. So it's important to tune in next week on September 20th right here at MorningShowCentral.com at 9.05 and check out Bandy with Doc Rock. The archives are all good. So it's important. You know, I'd like to say... 
Every soul has some kind of inner beauty, an expression that's worth offering. When you discover it and share it, you could start your own love revolution. It's your personal luminosity. It's okay to be sexy and to feel the enlightenment and give of yourself by using your talent for the betterment of humankind. It is your mission and it will rock your world. I'll see you at the top. Join me, Zach. Namaste. <laughs> All this energy calling me Back where it comes from It's such a crude attitude It's back where it belongs All the little kids growing up All the skills are going to be Blood rocks, be blood rocks Jump and Jean Jean, Moon and James Dean Go be blood rocks, be blood rocks Be blood rocks, yeah Damn it! And keep on rocking for the free world.